Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We honor you. We bless your name. Purify our hearts, O oh God. 
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Love is so deep. 
This year proved to be the most challenging for the world. These are extraordinary times that have tested and tried the faith of men. Yet, even at its direst, we would like to thank all those who found ways to be faithful in their giving to the church during lockdown, when we had to keep staff and resources going to serve our essential ministries. Tithing is still a responsibility. Sacrificial giving shows deep commitment to the great mission of the church. 2 Corinthians 9, 6-7 Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. If you desire to give your financial support, please take note of the following bank. Happy Sunday po sa atin lahat at magandang uh, araw po sa inyo. Uh, tayo po ay nagpapasalamat sa Panginoon sapagkat muli po tayo na makasamba po sa Kanya ngayong pong araw na ito. Sa ating pong pagsisimula, tayo po ay manalangin. Heavenly Father, kami po ilumalapit sa iyo. Inihingi po namin ang iyong pong uh, pagkapala sa amin sa araw na ito. Turuan mo kami at ang aming pong mga matututunan Nawa po magbigay sa amin ng comfort at ng kalakasan kami magpagpatuloy sa iyo. This is our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Tayo po ngayon ay nasa sa pagkapatuloy ng ating pong series sa uh, aklat po ng 2 Peter and nasa sa 2 Peter chapter 3 na po tayo. Ang aking pong uh, lesson for today ay pinamagatang ko po na comfort in the last days. Ating pong basahin ang uh, 2 Peter 3, 1-13 Sabay-sabay po tayo Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of the apostles of the Lord and Savior knowing this verse that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. 
Sa pagkapatuloy po natin, sa natapos po na chapter na pinag-aralan po natin last week, o pinag-aralan natin last week, it seems na napakarami po ng time na yon ng mga false teachers. And sa chapter po na ito, ay sinasabi po, pinalalahanan muli ni Pedro ang mga mananampalataya na balikan wika ninyo ang mga sinabi nung una ng mga propeta during the Old Testament and all of the reminders na pinalala namin mga apostol mula sa turo ng Panginoong Jesus. Because marami wika ang magsisi dating ng mga muggers or scoffers. A scoffer in this context is one who mocks Christ, ridicules the things of God, and opposes the gospel. Scoffers have been present since the Garden of Eden. Satan's first temptations of men was in the form of scoffing at God's commandment. Sabi niya, did God really say yes? Sabi niya kay Eva, kay sa mag-asawa. Scoffers dominated Noah's days. In Genesis chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, 11 to 7, leaving God with little choice but to destroy them all and start over with Noah, the only righteous man on earth. Ano po ba yung uh, argumento ng mga scopers na to? Doon sa ating binasa, doon sa mga naon ng talata, ang sabi po doon sa 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, Where is the promise of His coming? For ever since the Father fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. So sinasabi po ng mga makers, eh, nasa saan na ba yung uh, Panginoon ninyo na darating? Nasa saan yung sign ng kanyang muling pagbabalik? Because since our Father sleep, the patriarchs and probably even Adam and Eve, na sinasabi niya mga magulang, simula nung sila mamatay, eh wala namang pagbabago. Simula nung creation, walang change. The sun still suns, uh, still rise on the east and sets on the west. The mountains, the constellations, everything na kinireate ng God still are the same. Yun ang kanilang argumento. Sabi nila, He will not come. It's taking too long and there's no sign of His intervention. Nothing changed since creation. Then, Peter Defense and clarification. Sabi niya doon sa verse 5 and 6, For this they willfully forget, but that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perish being flooded by water. Ang sinasabi ni Pedro sa mga mananampalatay ang kanyang sinulatan, they willfully forget sinadya nilang kalimutan o marahil nawala sa kanilang alaala na ang ating daigdig na ito ay nilikha ng Diyos out of water as recorded in the book of Genesis. The Holy Spirit hovers around the water, it's void, and out of water, the earth was formed. And that earth that then existed, ang sabi ni Peter, perish being flooded by water. Sila sabi ni Pedro, this was the original earth that God created then during the time of Adam and Eve before the flood. But this earth, that earth was flooded by water. Alam po natin ang kwento sa uh, panahon po ni Nuwa na umulan ng napakalakas na ulan na habang panahon. At ang tubig ay umabot nagpaspas sa pinakamataas na bundok. And the earth na atin pong kinalalagyan po ngayon is a different earth now. So, mali ang sinasabi ng mga mockers, mali ang sinasabi ng mga scopers that time na walang pagbabago, hindi nag-interview ng Panginoon. Na, mali ang sinasabi nila na since creation, all things just continue. Because from the creation, from the original, <coughs> excuse me, from the original creation of God, the earth that was then perished in the flood and it is now different. And 
the heavens and the earth which are now. Sabi niya sa verse 7. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So sinasabi ni Pedro, ang earth noon, hindi na siya yung earth ngayon, and this present earth is reserved for fire in the future. God promised that He will not destroy it again with water. Well, sabi po sa Bible, Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the blood. Never again shall there be flood to destroy the earth. But this present earth, this current earth natin po nalagyan, will be, uh, is reserved for fire. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack or slow concerning His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward us, not willing that they should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Ang, ang pinupunta ni Pedro is, hindi nagtatagal ng Panginoon, or hindi sa delay, hindi sa nawawala siya sa kanyang schedule. But God, because of His loving kindness, is patient. Ang dahilan kung bakit hindi pa po dumarating ang Panginoon, na sinasabi nila na hindi na darating kasi ang tagal-tagal na. The book of 2 Peter was written about 62 to 65 AD. So that was 30 years na sila naghihintay the time from the time na umalis ang Panginoon sa Kristo. That was 30 years. Sabi, 30 years na kayo naghihintay, about 30 years na kayo naghihintay, and hindi pa rin siya dumarating. Sa ating pong kapanahonan, it's about 2,000 years. Could you imagine po, sino po sa atin yung mga nasaved 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or 30 years ago probably? Hindi nyo ba na-imagine na dapat tayo magpasalamat sa Panginoon? Naku, ang Panginoon po ay dumating earlier, let's say 10 years ago, or 20 years ago. Probably, madami po sa atin ang hindi po nasaved. But the reason kung bakit ang Panginoon hindi pa dumarating because He is patient and He is not willing na marami pong napahamak. But all should come to repentance. Now, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat that both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Ang sabi po sa Matthew chapter 24 verse 35, Heavens and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Please bear with me. Marami po akong slide na ipakita. Kasi, kung babasahin po natin ang ating pong text, Peter context, coverage is very, very long. Kinobird niya po yung creation hanggang sa new heaven and new earth. It's a really a very long scope. From the beginning until the end. Now, kung hindi ko po ipakita ang bigger picture na to, hindi natin ma-appreciate, hindi natin makita. Nasaan na ba tayo? Ano yung sinasabi ni Elder Ruel na new heaven and new earth that it will be burned? Nasaan tayo sa time ang timeline po ng Panginoon? Now, this is the ginawa ko po na chart, the scatology or the study, the doctrine of last things. Na gusto ko lang po magbigay uh, ng uh, paalala na probably some of you have a different point of view sa akin when it comes to eschatology, the study of the last things to come. But, uh, bigyan niyo po ako ng pagkakataon na may share ang um, isang bagay na ito na ever since ay ito yung aking pinangahawakan and it never changed since then. Since 1984, na matutunan ko bagay na ito, hanggang ngayon na ito pa rin ang aking pinanghahawak ang mga katotohanan. Now, kung kayo po ay merong ibang punto de vista, uh, please uh, do not turn up your TV or your cell phone and tingnan po natin. Alright. Old Testament. 
And then, on this time, this is the time that Christ arrived. Ang tawag po natin dito ay church age. Ito po tayo sa ngayon. We are here now. And then, from, <coughs> excuse me, from here until here. Ito po yung bagay in the future. Kasi hindi pa po ito nangyayari. Ito ay in the past. I will run very clear, very very quick, and then balikan pa po ito mamaya pa balik isa-isa. Hinatay po natin is rapture. Christ will come and the saints will be taken away. After the rapture, meron po tinatawag na seven years tribulation. Seven years na hinati po sa dalawa, 3.5 and 3.5 years. And then at the end of tribulation is the second coming. Ang rapture po ay hindi po second coming. Rapture is different from second coming. Explain later. After po na second coming, ito po yung end ng seven years. Alam po natin dito, magkakadito ng battle of Armageddon. And then, magkakadito po ng tinatawag na 1,000 years reign of Christ or millennium. After na millennium, ito yung sinasabi ni Peter na new heaven and new earth. Kung dito lang po ako magkukos, hindi po natin ito naiintindihan. Mahirap. Hindi natin ma-appreciate yung big picture. And then, eternity. I will be very quick because napakahaba pong topic nito, napakaraming detalye. Hindi ko po ito kaya taposin in 45 or so minutes. Alright. Rapture. Nasabi ko po kanina, rapture is not second coming. Magkaiba po sila. Ang rapture po ay walang sign. It is imminent. Yung binabasa po natin ng mga sign ng wars, famine, so and so, sa Matthew chapter 24, yung po yung sign of the second coming. Ang rapture po ay wala pong sinasabing sign. It will come na hindi po natin alam. Ang ating po mga verses dito, but we do not want you to be an informed brethren about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as though the rest to hope no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with Him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus for this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with his words. <clears throat> Ang sabi po ng Biblia, meron pa nga po ang Panginoon si darating, muli, oh, si babalik. Ang rapture po, <clears throat> actually, hindi natin makita yung salitang rapture in the Bible. Walang word na rapture po sa Bible. Ang nasa sa Bible po sa Greek ay arpadso. Or, naranasalit po siya sa Latin na rapturo, sa English po ay rapture. Ang harpadso po nito ay, katulad po ito ng word na ginamit sa Acts chapter 8 verse 39 to 40, if you will remember, nung utusan po ng angel si Philip, sabi niya, i-intersect mo yung yunok na sumamba sa Jerusalem pabalik ng, uh, ng kanyang uh, Ethiopia, andun siya ngayon sa Gaza, i-intersect mo siya doon at iyong ipaliwanag ang kanyang binabasa habang siya nasa chariot. And then alam po natin na nangyari na kinausap ni Stephen, o nag-request po yung uh, yunok sa kanya, i-explain mo sa akin to. And then Peter explained na buko pa isaya, nasave po yung yunok at binaptize po siya ni Philip. On the time, when they came out of the water, after the baptism, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away and the yunok no longer saw him but went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotos. So yung pong snatch dito, at yung sinasabi po doon sa Thessalonians kanina na taking away is the same word na harpadso. Si Philip, pagkatapos ng baptism, the Spirit snatched him away, nawala na lang siya, hindi siya nakita na yun up, and he found himself in a sutas. Alright. Next. Rapture fulfills this promise of Christ in John chapter 14, verse 13. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This promise, ang tinupad ng Panginoon sa rapture, na He will come again for the believers. 
to take the believers with him and bring believers do sa place na inihahanda ng Panginoon. Alright. We shall be all changed. Ito po yung mga highlights. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-52 Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Laman ay hindi pwede pumunta sa langit. Nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall, ang sleep po dito ay mamamatay. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Pagdating ng Panginoon, we will all be changed in a twinkling of an eye. This body will be changed into incorruptible, heavenly body. At tulad po ng katawan ng Panginoon Heso Kristo nung siya muling mabuhay, nung siya mag-resurrect. For we, 2 Corinthians 5, 4, For we who are in this tent, in this body, tent, groan, we groan in this body. Nakakaramdam tayo ng hirap, ng sakit. Nakakasakit, hindi to perfect. Misa sinasabi natin sa sabunan natin, pag parang gusto mo nang magpahinga. We groan in this body. Being burdened, we are burdened. Ang hirap mong mabuhay na nasa sa flesh. Not because we want to be unclothed, but for their cloth, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. So ito po yung mga highlights. I will summarize. Highlights, snatching away, carrying away of the believers. Dead in Christ will rise up first. Meeting in the clouds. Bodily transformation. Heavenly body. Fulfillment of Christ's promise in John chapter 14. Verse 3. After this event, after the rapture, comes the seven years tribulation. It's a long topic, but I will give you the gist. Seven years tribulation. Ano ba yung seven years tribulation? And then after the seven years tribulation is the second coming. Alright. Bakit pa natin na-compute na seven? Kasi lagi natin sila, ano yung nasabi na seven? Meron pa. It's a very long topic up to date. But, Bigyan po natin ng padaan ng kolensya ng bahagas. Saan po ba nagaling yung seven years? Saan nagaling yung uh, mga pagkukwenta ng mga kapanahon na ito? Pero po tinatawag na 70 weeks of Daniel. Kung babasahin niyo po ang Daniel chapter 9. Actually, from chapter 2. Na sinasabi niya, this is the future of, this will be the future of the Jews and actually believers like us. From the command to restore Jerusalem in Daniel chapter 9 verse 25, Hanggang completion po ng building program noong 396 BC ay 49 years or 7 weeks. Ang um, 70 weeks po nito ay 490 years. 7 weeks is 7 years. And then, nakta, nung dumating po ang Panginoon Heso Kristo, from the time of restoration, na mag-stop ng restoration, restoration sa Jerusalem, hanggang sa dumating ang Panginoon Heso sa 69 weeks. Pagdating po ng Panginoon sa Kristo, hanggang sa time natin, sa ating age, stop po yung clock. Hindi po tumatak po. Babasahin po niyo, pag-aralan po ninyo ang Daniel chapter 9, stop ang clock, and then mag-release muli kasi siya grace. Kung baga, binibigyan tayo ng grace. Parang, clock is not ticking. And then, after that, yung 7 years na to is the 78th week. Or, ang, <coughs> excuse me, so, 69 plus 1 week is 78 week. Ang rap, ang tribulation po ay tinatawag na Jacob's trouble, 78 week of Daniel, and it's 1 week or 7 years. Tapo natin sila ng 7 years kasi ang 1 week is equivalent to 7 years. Uh, excuse me, kasi hindi ko na po siya may elaborate as I put this in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, 70 weeks have been decreed for your people and your, and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make an atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. One week equals to seven years. 70 weeks is 490 years. Daniel 9, 26, Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. Ibig sabihin, after the 69 years, Messiah will come and the, the clock will stop. It's a grace, a period of grace. Clock stop, time out from Jesus' birth until rapture. And He, the Antichrist, all right.
Hindi ko na po siya ma-read. I will just tell it. Kasi masyado siya mahaba. What will transpire? Ano po yung mangyayari? I will consume so many time kung basahin ko po siya. Ano po yung mga highlights sa second coming o sa rapture? Antichrist will be revealed. During this period, Antichrist will be revealed. Deception to Israel by Antichrist. On the first, on the first part ng rap ng tribulation, Antichrist will make a peace treaty with Israel, but the same treaty he will break on the mid. Papasok po siya sa mamaya, probably I can read verse. Papasok po siya sa Jerusalem upo siya sa temple and he will demand worship. Dito na po papasok yung marking ng uh, mark of the beast. Temple will be violated. He will demand worship. Marking of the beast. Hail, fire, burning mountains and vegetation. Sea bodies of water into blood. River turns bitter. Earthquake, sores, famine, scorching, darkness, pain. All of those will happen here. Then, at the end of the seven years, is second coming, Battle of Armageddon. Ito po yung ating mga verses. So those were the highlights ng seven years tribulation. I do believe personally na hindi na po papasok ang mga Christians, ang mga mana ng palataya, in this period. That rapture, ako po yung isa sa mga believers of pre-trib or rapture before the tribulation. Kasi meron pong iba't ibang views pagdating po sa rapture. Meron pong pre-trib na rapture mayayari before the tribulation. Somebody, <coughs> may mga grupo naniniwala or individual naniniwala, mid-trib. At the middle of tribulation, Jesus will come. May ibig sabihin, ang mga Christian will suffer the first 3.5 years of tribulation. Meron po naman mga naniniwala na post-trib that Jesus come will rapture us at the end of the seven years. Ibig sabihin, ang mga Kristiyano papasok pa sa lahat po ng mga paghihirap na sinasabi dito. Which I don't believe. Because sa ilang po mga verses na aking ipapakita po maya maya. Alright. Second highlight. Still highlight po ito ng, ng seven years tribulation. The two witnesses proclaiming the kingdom. On the first 3.5 years, ang Panginoon po yung magsusuko ng dalawang witnesses. It's just like John the Baptist during the time of Jesus. Proclaiming the kingdom of God. Preaching. 144,000 Mark Jews sharing the gospel. On the last 3.5 years, ang Panginoon po yung pumili ng mga Jews and they have Mark of God. 144,000 who will proclaim the gospel in every nation. And marami po ang masasave. Many will be saved. Many will die for their faith. Many believers will survive the tribulation. Now, what will happen sa mga mana ng palataya na narapture po sa time mo to? So, up there, nasabi po tayo, kinuha po tayo ng Panginoon. Up in heaven, or up in the clouds, there will be these events, judgment of Christ, or giving of reward, grounds for deserving believers and married supper of the Lamb. So, <clears throat> yung pong mga sinasabi na crowns na matatanggap po natin mga mga nanapalataya, this is the time. During this time, wala na po tayo dito. Kinuha na tayo ng Panginoon. And in that time, yung pong tinatawag na judgment seat of Christ, the giving of crowns, the giving of rewards. Alright. Alright. Few verses. Revelation chapter 7 verse 4 And I heard the number of those who were sealed 144,000 sealed from every tribe the sons of Israel. Ito po yung 144,000. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 And these things I look and behold a great multitude which no one could count from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in robes and palm branches were in their hands. Nakita ito ni John sa kanyang vision ng the book of Revelation na pagkatapos po ng Tribulations. May nakita siya ng mga napakarami na mga multitudes of which no one could come from every nation, all tribes, mga naligtas. 
they are robe and wine. So I do believe that during tribulation, because of this, two witnesses and 144,000 missionaries, marami po ang maliligtas at magsusurvive. Pero marami rin po ang mamamatay. Alright, Revelation chapter 11 verse 4, And I will grant authority to two my witnesses, to two, to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days, 1260 days or 3.5 years. Ito po yung dalawang witnesses. Some scholar says, uh, it's uh, Moses and Elijah. Uh, I have to find verses and it will take too long. Ito yung puto ng iba na dalawang witnesses nito would be Moses and, and Elijah. The judgment seat of Christ. Ito po yung sinasabi. Judgment seat of Christ. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na rewarding. Sa 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. That we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It is not to be condemned to go to hell. Habang tayo ay, nung pagkatapos tayo kuhanin po dito sa lupa, ito po'y haharap tayo sa harapan ng Panginoon to be judged. Ang ginamit pong word ay to be judged, but it's to be rewarded for those deserving believers. Alam po natin yung pangyayari, na-rapture po yung mga mananampalataya here, and on the second coming, asama po tayo bumalik ng Panginoong Heso Kristo sa kanyang second coming, on His return, when He comes again, this is the second coming. Rapture is not the second coming. On His second coming, together with the angels, on the battle of Armageddon, kasama niya po tayo bumalik in glorified body. Pero tandaan po natin na may mga nag-survive po sa tribulation, may mga mananampalataya na nag-survive po dito na pumasok ng millennium. So, the people... People are on the first part of 1,000 years. This will be populated. Pop populated po natin dito ay Christians or believers from heaven and those mortals believers na galing po sa seven years tribulation. So, saints and mortal believers that survive the tribulation. Peace, harmony. There will be no wars, sa sabi ko na Bible. Peace in animal kingdom. Righteous governance. Yearly worship at Jerusalem will happen on 1,000 years reign of Christ. Another highlight, an eden like environment. Ibabalik po ng Panginoon ang environment katulad po ng time. Halos, eden like Prosperity, productivity, long lives. Lifespan like in the time before Noah na ang mga tao ay hahaba po ang buhay. Today at 100 is considered very early. Sa time po na ito, pag namatay ka ng 100 years old, ikaw ay considered na napakabata mo pang manamatay. Great white throne judgment, judgment for unbelievers, casting of Satan and the believers to lake of fire. These are the verses, there are so many, if I will read them one by one, hindi po natin kahit tapusin. Alright, ilang po sa mga verses? I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people and there will be no longer be heard in her the voice of weeping and the sound of crying. No longer will be there on it in an infant who lives but a few days. Wala pong mamamatay na bata. For the youth will die at the age of 100. And the one who does not reach the age of 100 will be fought a purse. Kung ikaw tayo mamatay at 100, ikaw ay sinumpa pa. Very long years, very long lifespan. Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when the flowman will overtake the reaper and the trader of grapes him who sows it, when the mountains will drip sweet wine and the hills will be dissolved. Prosperity, abundance. Ibig sabihin yung cycle ng planting and harvesting po'y nagpapangapangabot. Walang gap, walang tagtuyot, walang panahon na walang ani. Hindi pa natatapos yung pag-aani, eh magtatanim na ang mga tao. Ganun po kayaman on that period. Ganun po yung abundance. Then, 
great white throne judgment. Then I saw a great white throne in him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the thing which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. The death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, balikan po natin, at the end of millennium, si Satan po, ay muli pong pakakawalan for a short period of time. For a short period of time. Si Satan ay nakabound for 1,000 years. At the end of 1,000 years, si Satan po'y muling pakakawalan at siya po'y muling makakadeceive. And on this period will be the final revolt of Satan. And alam po natin ang mangyayari. Lahat na mag-revolt, hindi man po magtatagumpay. Then Satan and all the people together with him will be cast into, will be judged. Meron pong, tinatawag pong great white throne judgment on this period. Okay, balikan ko po, may nakalimutan ako sa magandang punto. Maraming sabihin po ninyo, paano nangyari na may magre-revolt? Paano makakakubisi pa si Satan here? Eh, napakaganda na po ng palakad. It's a perfect government. Jesus Christ is the one ruling. Wala na pong corruption. Wala na pong issue of pill health. Wala na po kayo mapabalitaan na mga corrupt governors or no, no corruption. Malinis ang pamamalakad. Halos wala kang may reklamo. But why the people still were deceived by Satan? Now, <clears throat> saan po lang galing? I just want to make this clear kasi ito yung naging tanong ko rin una. Kung nung simula po, lahat na pumasok sa 1,000 years ay saved. Those who return together with Christ in heavenly bodies, tayo po yun, na narapyo. And those who survive, and those who survive the seven years tribulation, sila po yung nagsimula dito. Pero tandaan po natin, those who survived the seven years tribulation, hindi pa po sila in glorified body form. Sila ay still mortals. At yung kanila mga ipanganganak, andito pa rin po ang curse, andito pa rin po yung sin nature of man. Daladala pa rin po nila. Hindi po automatic na yung kanilang ipinanganak po dito ay mananampalataya. In this 1,000 year period, marami pa rin po mga tao ang hindi po kikilala sa Panginoon. Hindi po automatic na save. On the first part, automatic, lahat ito mananampalataya. Pero yung mga ipanganganak na mga pumasok dito, galing sa trip period, sila po ay hindi po mga mananampalataya. Kinakalangan pa rin nila mananampalataya sa Panginoon Yesu Cristo. And those who will not believe, sila yung mga kasama ni Satan na magre-revolt. And binabi siya na ko kanyang Great White Throne Judgment. Alam ko po, mag-iisad na po siguro ako. Pero malapit na po ako matapos. Promise. Magre-revolt sila. Muling magkakaroon po ng judgment dito. Hindi na po yung uh, judgment set of Christ, but great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment, na sinasabi ko po kanina, the judgment for the unbelievers. Ang sabi po doon sa Revelation chapter 20, lahat ng mga namatay, ng mga hindi man ng palataya, wala pa po sila sa kanya. Sa ngayon po, wala pa po sila sa final destiny. Wala pa po sila doon sa lake of fire. They are still somewhere There in hell, but not on the lake of fire that will be the second death, the final destiny ng mga hindi man na napalatay together with Satan. Ang sabi po doon ay, and <clears throat> sabi po doon, then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. Lahat ng mga namatay sa dagat, kahit na yung mga abo, lahat po yun ang mga hindi mabubuhay, haharap muli sa Panginoong Isu Kristo, hahatulan on the judgment seat of Christ, oh no, 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 on the white great throne judgment or bema seat, and then they will be cast under 
final destination. All right. Last, the new heaven and the new earth na sila sabi po ni Peter po kanina. Kaya ka po ito diniscuss para maintindihan natin saan ito mangyayari. Scriptures, basahin nyo na lang po ito kasi ako po ay nag-extend na ng oras. But before that, ito po yung pinakita ko na slide. Bago mangyari yan, this present heaven, uh, this present earth will be burned. It's a purging. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Masaya po sa 3.10 ng Peter. It's not an annihilation. Hindi po siya yung parang magkikreate ang, ang Panginoon ng a new earth, really, a new one. It's not a neo. But the same earth that will be purified. No stain of sin, no mark, Lahat po ng may bahit, kasalanan, lahat na po pwedeng pagkamantsahan ng death, sin, evil, lahat ng karumihan will be burned up. And I'm thinking na walang matitira halos. Probably. Kasi isang, ano po bang parte ng salibutan ng walang bahit, kasalanan? And then, new heaven and new earth. Ang sabi niya, Balikan ko po. Then I saw a new heaven and new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth pass away. And there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Nakita ni, ni John a new heaven. And a new, the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven. These are the verses. Isang araw po. Wala na po kang time. Isang araw, magugunaw by fire ang salibutang ito. Ilinisin po ng Diyos. And God will make a new heaven. It's not the heaven na uh, it's not only the heaven na siyang titira ng mga mana ng palataya. The whole universe. I do believe. So I put that all the elements will be melt away. I don't know how. I don't know what will be the exact thing that will happen. But by His power, by His word, this earth and the whole universe, I prepared some pangingon by fire. And after that, God Himself, the new Jerusalem, out of heaven, will come down here on earth. And we will be with the Lord forever. Wala po tayong time, halos mapakaba po nito. But this is our hope. Isang araw, pukuhan po tayo ng Panginoon. Alisin po tayo dito. And all of the things na kayo po dinis kasi mangyayari. And we are waiting for the new heaven. Now what? Last verse. Ano po yung application? Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct in godliness? Looking and hastening the coming of the day of God. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 11 to 12. Ano ngayon? Malaman po natin ang mga bagay nito. Masabi po ni Pedro, Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Anong uri daw po ng tao dapat tayo maging? Yan mga alam natin na mga bagay nito yung mangyayari. Sa nga raw, iiwanan natin lahat ang ating tinatanggilin. Malaking bahay. O sa bagay, wala naman po tayo dito. But ang punto po dito ni, ni Peter is for us to live holy and godly while we are waiting for all these things to unfold. And this is the message na gusto ko pong iwanan sa ating po lahat. 
when we don't know. 1,000 years is equal to one day sa God. One day to 1,000 years. It's not really the same as I put it as is. Wala po itong mathematical theology. Ibig sabihin, ibang timeline po ng Panginoon. Yun lang, ganun lang yun. Sa atin parang matagal, pero sa Panginoon, may iksi lang. Sa atin parang may iksi, pero sa Panginoon parang matagal. Something like that. It's not really is, as 1,000 is one day, and one day is 1,000. Ibig sabihin lang, iba po ang time frame ng Panginoon. And, kaya po siya hindi pa dumarating. Because, gusto ng Diyos, na tayo, kung sino man po sa atin, ang hindi pa nakakakalala sa Panginoon, hindi pa naliligtas, wala pa kayong kagdan. Alam ninyo, hindi pa kayo sigurado na mga kasama doon sa rapture. Hindi niyo sigurado kung papasok kayo hindi doon sa tribulation. Now is the time. God loves us so much that He gave the Lord Jesus Christ for us. Anyone who will accept Him will be saved at hindi pa papasok sa mga paghirap na yun doon sa seven years tribulation. Sa atin naman po, mga mana ng palataya, ang hamon niya po sa atin, yamang alam na po natin ang bagay nito. We have this hope. We should be comforted. Hindi po tayo titigil dito habang panahon. Matatapos ang groaning in this body. Groan. We groan. We really groan in this body. Nahihirapan tayo. But one day this will end. Tadaan na natin ang all stages na yan. Not, not, the, not the tribulation. We will reign with Christ. We will live with Him. At the end of the day, God who is in heaven will come down here on earth. That is my belief. Ano pa para kanyang i-purge on earth? For what? Kung hindi po natin titirahan. But He will come down and live with us forever and ever. The heavenly body, we can go anywhere. Sabi po doon, bukas ang 12 gates every day. We can go somewhere we are in our heavenly bodies. So, salamat po sa Panginoon and uh, I hope tayo po ay natuto, may natutunan, and ma-bless po tayo na Salamat sa Panginoon. Isang araw, mangyayari sa akin to. It's a promise of God. He will come back again. In the rapture, paharin tayo. We will go back here. The second coming. Reign with Christ. Live with Him forever. Tayo po manalangin. Salamat po Diyos sa iyo. Salamat po sa iyo mga salita. Kulang ang time para po alamin namin ang uh, mga bagay na ito. Was I just convicted na alam ko po, hindi ko po kaya itong i-discuss yung 45 minutes or one hour. But you convict. Kinausap mo ako, Panginoon. I know. Nadaanan, kahit pa pano, mga bagay na ito. Para sa iba ay maging paalala. Alam ko pong marahil ito alam na ng iba. Ngunit maaaring sa iba ay ngayon lang ito narinig. Dalangin ko po, takilang Diyos, ano man na mensahe mo na gusto mong iparating sa amin, magsalita ka po sa amin sa pamagitan ng aming mga salitang napakinggan. Salamat po for the comfort of your coming. For the comfort that one day matatapos ang aming groaning, ang aming burden, ang aming burden, and we will be with you forever and ever. This is our prayers in Jesus' name. In the twinkling of an eye, he is coming. Like a thief in the night, he'll be there. We shall meet him in the air in all his glory. Maranatha, he is coming, he'll be there.